There's something within us. Something sacred. Something worth protecting. Silver Team, on me. It's that time of year again, and everyone at KG Certified is excited about the BetMGM's March matchups. The college tournament is even more exciting at the king of sportsbooks. New customers that place a $10 money line wager on any game will receive $200 in free bets. If any team hits a three-pointer during the tournament, yes, during the tournament, you gotta love those odds. Just use bonus code KG200 when you register. Anything can happen during BetMGM's March matchups. So get in on the action. Download the app and use bonus code KG200 to win $200 if any three-pointer is made during the tournament. Yeah! New customers only. Today we're getting behind the scenes access with the genius kids. Yes, the kids that are actually growing and making the metaverse. So come on in here. Today on Certified, we're about to dig into this. You feel me? Let's get it. Yeah. Never a dull day at the compound, I'll tell you that. Go in here and holler at the, the genius kids. Holler at Cordell and Chief. See what dog on. Ooh, woo! Smell good in here. Smell good in here. Oh, there you go. <laughs> right here. You followed your nose. You know what I'm Follow your nose. You know what I'm What's up, huh? <laughs> it's all good. We in here, man. You all know how I go in the dog pound, man. This the atmosphere here, though. You know what I'm saying? Right. Straight I thank y'all for letting me come in here, too. Man. Absolutely, I man. I love what y'all doing, man. You know, when I came in here to see your pops, man, we ran into each other. You, you totally inspired me, man. Not just to get in crypto, but to learn more about it. I've understood it, I've done it down, I've done it down to my friends. Funny, and I'm saying funny, I'm watching something of other influencers being in it, and they asked them a simple question. Man, what is NFTs? And the answer was comical. It was comical, stuttering, it was over here, it was over there. Couldn't follow it, so I asked y'all to simplify it. What is an NFT? An NFT is a non-fungible token. Like, you can see behind me, there's NFT collections all over mm. OpenSea. That's a, a marketplace for NFTs. Right. And what you get essentially, like for example, this one that I bought, this NFT I bought, when I bought into it, I get the IP and I get the rights. So that means you own it. I own it. Right. So essentially that's one of, you know, one of 10,000 characters and the value and the, the, the exposure you get owning one of those is, equivalent to owning a Disney character, oh, wow. depending on how you monetize off oh, of it. Wow. But then you got other NFTs that, you know, are just cool to collect. And like, this is our social currency. People always, you know, buy things just to show others yeah. their status and yeah. where they are in life. Like, yeah. why do people drive a Maybach over a Toyota? And right. it's like, this is, you know, that next wave, I believe, of just not even flexing, but just you know, communicating. Flex, it is, Communicate, because when we talk, we we telling people, oh yeah, I just got back from Turks and Caicos, right. I did this and that. I think it's just a cool factor, but I also think it's a market for um, all creatives, you know, no, no matter if you're white, black, rich, wherever you come from, it's an even playing ground for you to jump into this space. And by owning these avatars, it kind of embodies who you are mm. as a person. As you can see, I'm wearing cheetah print. Right. My ape has cheetah, cheetah fur, okay. so it's like, you know, that's something that I, it, and that, that's just how I look at it. Like, like it. you know, some people collect Jordan 1, some people collect baseball cards. Like trucks, all type of stuff, right? You get it? So. And, and it's a whole new technology. I think what people don't get about NFTs is it's not like, they could look at it for the collections and that's a big part of it. But this new smart contract blockchain technology is a new way that you could prove ownership. Mm. You know, everything's on a, on a ledger. Everything's transparent. You can't people can't fake what they're doing. It's mm. it's very transparent. Everybody knows who's owned it, the previous owners. I think when people see like what's gonna change the future and how this is gonna live on, it's these digital assets that you could collect, new art, and the technology of proving ownership. Mm. I think that's gonna be what is the big takeaway from these last 
year or so. Are y'all seeing any fraudulent stuff jump in here? Because you already know oh, yeah. in, in anything, in any industry, it's got to be it's got to be rigged, right? It's got to take some bumps you, and you, bruises. You, you just have to be uh, vigilant and you kind of have to just like do your own research at the end of the day. Diligence. A lot of it is, you know, Cordell could tell you like, you know, with him being kind of like the face of what we've been doing, mm. uh, people are calling us. We turn down more money like, than we make it's, it's, because uh, a lot of the projects are pump and dumps. And what that means is you bring people there just to raise the value and then you pull, you pull it out. So now essentially all those people that invested into your project, they lose money once you pull it out because you taking that 10, 20, 30 million, mm. whatever. And now they lost $200 or, or, you know, 500. That means a lot to them. So it's like. I really like the community because, you know, the positive people that's in the space, the, the slogan is, wag me, we all going to make it. And mm -hmm. I think having that type of mindset in the industry, it can only just grow from there. That's continuity too, man. And those create real communities that people support, that people actually are passionate speaking to their hearts about stuff, right? Yeah, it's it, a lot of the, so what we've noticed, a lot of people that are like natives in the community come from um, like comic book fans to sneakerheads, art design, to, right? to collectors, collectors, okay. collectors, okay. Gotcha. people who, who like gotcha. collect items. And when you think about that, that's its that's its own community. People who wake up early for mm. like uh, Supreme, Nike, Jordan gotcha. drops, gotcha. they're here early to make sure that they're getting their NFTs. They're here trying to get on the whitelist. They're right. waking up at eight a.m. to make sure that they're getting what they want. So it's really, it's really, it's like the next evolution of that culture. So, man, how did y'all get into this? I know when I, when I first saw you, you was a football player. Yep. You was playing football. You looked like that's what you was on. You was passionate. <clears throat> take, take me through this, man. So, honestly, um, I started playing football at six. You know, honestly, I was five years old. My dad started me super young. And it was always his dream to make it to the NFL. Um, so, you know, through his kids, I got an older brother. My brother was a quarterback, um, and I was a wide receiver. So, you know, he did a lot for communities that I'm talking about, like Inglewood, Compton, Long yeah. Beach. A lot of those kids I grew up with because I played football with them. Wow. And, you know, a lot of them had, you know, single house moms and struggling with rent. So essentially he was giving back with the football stuff. And I didn't know, I was just playing, you know. And over time, the more, you know, I would work on my craft, the better I got. But I, even when I was six, I never felt like I identified with, with sports. I was into tech, I was into like reading books and animals, like just not the normal shit that, you know, most kids would be into that grow up with black parents. Right. So I just was always struggling to find what I identify with. Mm. And then over the times I just got better and better at football and it was like, well, it looked like this is all I can do. It's either I'm a rap or I'm gonna play sports because that's all I see people that look like me doing at the time. So, you know, when I got accepted to UCLA, when I got there, I told Coach Jim Moore, I told him to his face, I'm like, I'm not passionate about football, and I feel like you should give my scholarship to another kid. And, you know, he sat there, and he, he come for me, and he told me, he was like, he played football for his dad, because his dad was a coach as well. His dad coached um, Michael Vick and, you know, a lot of greats. And it, it was crazy, because I'm thinking I'm about to go there, and he about to just shit on me, but it was more like he hugged me, and. You know, I was crying because it, it was a lot of pressure for me because it's like, all right, you this good and you got to accept UCLA. I just got an ESPN TV show. My dad calling me every day. He like, you ready to go to Lee? Like it was more pressure. more pressure than it was like, I'm having fun. I'm doing it. Like when I was having fun was when I was playing with all my friends from Long Beach, Compton, right. and just seeing, you know, them come spend the night at my house and what that meant to them was more fun than the actual game. and. You know, once I got to college, it was like, I'm 18 now, so I feel like I should be able to make my own decision. And I walked away and jumped out on a leap of faith and landed in the metaverse. Bet on yourself, as I like to call it, y'all. How'd y'all meet, man? man we went we, to middle we, school and high school together. We've known so. each other since we were kids. Word. So, you know, we have been working together for the last, like, seven, eight years, really trying to, like, figure out what was the best fit tech-wise and production-wise. You know, we, we've done all kinds of things between fashion, movies, sports, entertainment. Mm. And two years ago, Cordell like looked at me and was like, this is what we're doing. We're gonna go into the metaverse. We're just gonna jump in like all in. 
and we're gonna kind of leave everything else behind. What was y'all doing up until that point? We creative junkies, so like we create gotcha, things gotcha. and try to pitch gotcha, it, and gotcha. you know, starting cleaning companies, hustlers, just, hustlers. just all types of different hustlers. projects. And, yeah. and at the time, we was making probably like ten to fifteen grand a month. And when I told him that, he like, why would we stop doing this when we making you know good money at the mm -hmm. time? And I told him like, don't even worry about the money. This is next. Like I just had you a feeling. Wave, I just had a feeling that this would be wow. next, and like. I'm, I, sometimes I feel very intuitive. So like when I walked away from football, I began, you know, my modeling career and mm. got to go overseas and right. work with Gucci, Tommy Hilfiger, and it was opening doors for me that wouldn't have opened. Even though I'm Snoop Dogg's son, it's like you still got to have a reason to stay in that room. That was something that I was always trying to figure out. Like, how can I stay in the room? What, what is my calling? What's, wh where are they going to hear me at? And when I saw this wave and saw the community, I'm like, Bingo. That's what we finna do. Yeah. So from there, we looked at it and the community was super accepting. You know, we went kind of like ground floor, ground level, went to events. We have Best a small team with us now. It's uh, obviously Cordell and I, yeah, Amador, Amador, and uh, Nick's kind of, Nick Adler is our kind of like big homie in the space who introduced us to people and kind of walked us in and then we got to kind of go from there. And it's been two years now and now we're known as SGS. We're Snoop's Geek Squad. <laughs> so we've been able to establish him. And not only are we his Geek Squad, he's a client of ours. Wow. So, yeah. you know, we do all the branding for his NFTs. Just started working with Wiz Khalifa two days ago. We open in the roster. And I'm hopefully, next. I'm hopefully next. we can get there. Stop. I'm next. We've been ready to talk to you. We've been talking to you. I am next. Stop. Go. Bro, don't do that. Don't do 21 that. 21 reasons, I got to ask y'all, man. I got to ask y'all. When you first took this to your pops, what did he say to you? You told dad, I'm in the metaverse. I'm messing man, with the metaverse. Man, said, Be he, honest. He, he, he put his blunt down. He was like, I'm in the universe. And I'm like, I, I know that, obviously, but Pops, this is the next wave. And like, you know, he hard headed because he's been right and for he's so old many school years. Too. He's old school too. Man. Right. And I think, you know, the older generation don't like to change what's already working. God. So it was going to be hard for me to try to, hey, Pops, instead of you dropping music on Spotify and Apple Music, Let's drop it here and your fans can now own a piece of your music. Because mm. for years I was telling him, I'm like, Taylor Swift recreated her album yep. because they wouldn't give her a master's well, they back. Bought her, somebody bought her catalog. Right? Yeah. Yep. And I told him, I'm like, if you was to do that with Doggy Style and you tell the fans, like, don't listen to that Doggy Style, I don't own it, listen to this one, they're going to do what you said. And, you know, over the time, I think it kind of registered with him and then he ended up buying Death Row and then. After he bought Death Row, that's when he called me. He like, I'm ready to jump in. It's gonna be an NFT record label. I want you to run it, son. Oh wow, that's 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 game changing. And then we went to work from there. And and <laughs> for the last, I don't know, it's he, we've lost track of time here. Like we're as here you should putting in like a hundred hours a week. As like, you should. Yes. Yeah. Reciprocating though. You know right. What yeah. I'm absolutely. Right. We know that this is an opportunity that we need to take advantage of. Yeah. It's and 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 for us. We started on OpenSea. We've been doing drops on all different types of platforms, Gala, Sound, XYZ, kind of spreading our, our, our reach across the, the metaverse, and for lack of better words. And what we've seen is just a positive reaction of us giving back to the community, keeping people involved, doing Twitter spaces, just really being on the ground level of all this. And grassroots, man. You know, I label y'all the trendsetters of this. You know, I'm a huge guy that believes in betting on yourself. I'm a huge guy on innovation. And when I look around today, I don't see a lot of that. I don't see a lot of original thought coming into things. And then when I do see them, they be like, dang, I could have thought of that. Like that type, right? Mm -hmm. Y'all are actually setting not just the business or how future NFTs, future Coinbase products are being not just promoted, but being launched, but in the creation, man. No one would think to, to put Cheetah. I think, you know what I'm saying? Like the, 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 the swag is starting to take a whole nother turn. And it's starting to look different. And y'all, to me, are the faces of that. Man, when I came here and I talked to y'all, I'm telling you, man, I'm going to say this again. Y'all don't, you don't, don't know what y'all did for me walking out of here from an inspirational standpoint. That's how I know I'm going to do this. i just been, I just been, I'm a, I'm a thinker. And when I'm turning, I'm in here thinking about what I want to create. I want to ask y'all, what have y'all been working on that y'all can show us? Or what do you feel passionate about that you can show us today? That's y'all creation. We feel really passionate about the open sea venture we just took. We literally started February 28th. In three weeks, we traded 3,000. Uh, of this year? Uh, yeah, wow. this year. In three weeks, we traded 1,000 ETH. 
and a thousand ETH is uh, three million dollars. And that was in the last month. That's Ethereum, by the way, for people who don't know. Yeah, ETH, ETH. Coinbase talk, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, put y'all up on game, you know yes, what I'm saying? Sir. Right. Yes, sir. So what we've, been, what we've been doing is putting music up that so, Snoop's had, owns. And not only just Snoop, you know, we got artists, unreleased artists. Um, That's fire, yo. So this is one of the singles, and then this is the collection. So we have 261 singles traded a thousand ethereum wow and then four thousand four hundred owners. owners that means people have a chance to buy into this have a piece of it exactly own a piece. and what we do with all our singles once you buy it you own it mm. so once you buy it you get an unlockable link where you can get the instrument Authentic. and the vocals so right after you buy it there's a link where now you have the chance to make a remix on a Snoop Dogg song or a Wiz Khalifa song or a Too Short or, and for so many years it's been, I like that record and all, all you could do is listen to it. But if you want the instrument, you go to YouTube. So it's like, nah, come right here. It's a one-stop shop. And then what we've been, you know, encouraging the community is make a remix and we're gonna repost it or Dog gonna get on a remix. To show how to use it or how your version would and, come And what we exactly. found is people are looking at this as digital trading cards for music. Yeah. Uh, so say there's 100 copies of one song. There's only those 100 copies. Mm -hmm. People have been buying them, trading them, flipping them. So we're now seeing that people can make money off the music that they like. Yeah. You know, if they like a track, they can hold on to it, wow. sell it at a higher value. It's the first time anybody can make money off the music that they like. And then also the entry point is very low. Like you can see it's $26. Okay. You know, most blue chip NFT projects are, you know, 300 grand, 100 grand, 50,000. And then up at the top, the unlockable content. Once you buy that, it unlocks, and then that's where you get the stems oh, and the. Wow. So it's like you know. How much are y'all seeing that in future projects like this? Y'all saying have to come with a I tangible, think, have to come with a, a song, I have think, to come honestly, with. I think a, everything. A shirt. Yeah, I, honestly, because it's, we as the consumer have spent so much money, and we see the valuation of all these companies, and we see Instagram getting bought out by. Facebook for 14 billion and you just see all them numbers and it's like why would I keep giving them my money when there's no incentive which is why Instagram is now paying content creators to make videos yeah. you get paid to make reels why is that so you don't go on your own platform and, and take 97 percent rather than Instagram giving you a few couple thousand and it's mm. like you know, I think we just getting more conscious as a community. And and one thing I'd like to really point out is on the gaming side, I think gaming is a big part of this, but an example that works on that is, you know, parents and their kids have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars on Fortnite Facts. and Call of Duty buying these skins, digital skins. All types of stuff, right. guns, Things dogs. you don't own. You don't own them. Or Once, that you can't ever, tangible touch or none of yeah, that. Yeah, you spend that money and it's gone. Now, as NFTs and metaverse gaming evolves, You'll be able to own those things and you know it's not just lost money you can make money off of it you could flip it you could create with it you can own it and i think that just adds another element to what we've been seeing now you know you can go to college on gaming now <laughs> yeah you can get a scholarship yeah. for gaming now so you see and, and you see what, what we what, like the evolution of that you know recently cordell led the charge here to get us to get snoop a deal signed with phase clan snoop's now a phase member so we've been seeing our our focus has been in that direction uh, for a while now and that deal took a year too just wow. to note that like why do you think it's taken just the download of all the of the understanding or the are we in that transition of, of things changing? i think because gaming is the biggest industry yeah like if you look at the numbers like batman did 36 million over it's the weekend still going. And that's a movie, 36 million for Batman, a movie over the weekend when the Nelk Boys did an NFT drop and made 23 million in 10 minutes. So it's like you're starting to look at the numbers and it's like this space is just, you know, I think trumping every business. And, and the opportunity for everybody. It's an equal opportunity field. You're seeing, you know, people who minted, so this is Board Ape, right? People who minted Board Apes at $218, right? can now flip it for three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000. So, you know, it was open for everybody at the time. It wasn't like some... It wasn't known. It was like... Yeah, like it was if you were there, if you were involved. It's changed people's lives, wow. right? So that, I think, is the coolest part. It's not, you know, if you're listening, if you're paying attention, it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, you know, where you're at. If you're able to understand the technology, you can, you can make it work. And then if you're creative and smart with the assets you own, you're going to 
creatively monetize off of it. So my ape has dropped singles. He dropped seven singles. And throughout those seven singles, it grossed over $200,000. And my ape costs, as you can see, 295000 So I made back almost 80% of that money. And now I just started a cannabis brand and my ape is the, the face of it. So it's like we're going into the food and beverage thing later this year. So it's like, you know, not just to own your NFTs. This is something I learned from my dad. Like, don't just let it sit in your wallet. Like, do something with it. Make it an asset. Exactly. Okay. And I saw that too. Was that the board eighth? Board eighth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. So take me through some of y'all favorite NFTs that y'all own yourself or just favorite brands, period. Obviously, board apes. Uh, and, and we've taken what they've built as the model of IP licensing. I think that's that's where we got the whole idea. Inspiration model, for us. Yeah, like because once and Board Apes did something cool. They bought up their competition, and not only did they buy their competition, they gave you the rights to own and have the IP of the other NFT collections that was like right underneath Board Ape oh, wow. or higher. Uh, so that's innovating. Clonex is it really cool? I said, what are those? What are those companies that are up there? We know Board Ape because it's it's, it's yeah, just a famous one. So what what is that, what are the other comp competitors that are on the same levels so as Board Ape? On OpenSea, as you see, these are the top NFTs wow, Ape, in, yacht the, club. in the last seven days. Then they got a Munich Ape Yacht Club. So the the Board Ape Yacht Club is the OGs. Right. And then the Mutant Ape Yacht Club YGs. is like the yeah the the YG exactly. YGs, and then they yeah, have yeah. the Board Ape Kennel Club, the dog. So it's like you get the whole set, then you get like, there's so many incentives into And then it. I think outside of that, if you could scroll down, World of Women is something that we've been really passionate about. Very passionate. Uh, I really like this project. This project's for women, founded by women. It's something that, mm. you know, you're looking for inclusivity in the space. And when it comes to tech, it's a very male dominated mm. industry. So, is you know, it? yeah. In absolutely. this space, it's only 27% women in, in, in crypto and NFTs. And they've done a great job as far as differentiating themselves from the space and just, you know, being authentic. Um, I actually own two of these. I got mm. one for my sister um, in October, and I just bought one, which I plan on turning into an a artist, which is signed with Defro. So just, you know, back to my, my point of monetizing off your assets. Mm. Wow, this the wave right here? Yeah, I think so. absolutely. <laughs> How long has the world of women been out? Has it been out long? Yeah, all these projects kind of like came out around the same time. Like okay. Board Ape Yacht Club came out in April last year. Mm. World of Women came out in like May or June last year. And all it's taken is, them time to go. Like people look at it like these just kind of skyrocketed out of nowhere. These communities did a lot of work to get to where they're at. So to curate this momentum to even get to this point where you even top five, ten, fifteen on here, you've had to have. Yeah, you need. You've to have had to do some ground. You have to have a proper roots. Discord channel. You have to have community managers. You need to be doing the. And this um, is the top NFTs for music. But right now we charted at one, two, three, and five. And, and all these have music pieces that come with them. Or every yes. single one. Holy snap! So we just did this one because you know we're so in love with what Board Ape Yacht Club is doing. We specifically made an EP for the Board Ape holders. And so EP is like a little short, six four to eight. Songs. Oh, four songs. Oh, literally that's four dope. songs, and wow. each record sold out in less than 12 hours. And it was, and, and what was really cool is- <laughs> This is crazy. And we grossed on that project 500,000. And, and, and it was all in ApeCoin, which is the, the new, new currency. currency that Bored Ape created for the, their, their, holders. Ho, their holders. So they dropped it. Uh, it was pretty crazy. So they dropped 10,000. It's so like Ape. Ethereum. ApeCoin is like Ethereum. But Straight it's, yet? Yeah, yeah, it's at twelve, thirteen dollars. It's at thirteen dollars, and yeah, they them? dropped. Listen, to what he yeah, about so, to say? So, <laughs> <laughs> this, this is pretty crazy. So, basically, everybody who owns a board ape, some people, by the way, own like Hundreds. fifty, a hundred, right? They gave each person who owns a board ape ten thousand um, ape coins. Just you could claim it for free. So everybody who owns a board ape woke up. If you own one, you woke up to like a hundred and thirty thousand dollars just in your bank account. Just right away. That's at zero zero. That said nothing, nothing, right? Exactly. That was at, you were at ten dollars. You at, you said it's at what? Twelve? About twelve dollars. Well, it's at twelve dollars. So for some people, I mean And each ape you own, you get ten thousand coins. So that's a hundred and twenty thousand right off the rip. Just for just for owning and holding on this long. So this is incentive based too. Exactly. And that's what you goes back to what we what you asked us earlier, like, do we think projects need to have roadmap and incentive? There's a reason like this is the number one, because they Built roadmaps. They do in-person events. 
they, you know, to any NFT project that you want to create, it needs to have more than just the, the picture. The art gotcha. and, and why people should buy it shit. You should give them all these things because Board Ape is making so much money. They're able to have an ecosystem that'll give back. I think I feel really confident about Board Ape Yacht Club. I think they're gonna be the biggest, and they also building their own metaverse. So with your apes and all that, and your coins, you could buy land. You could play in the game like Sims, like Sandbox. But and speaking of which, Sandbox, we could we could slide over here. Absolutely. Do you, you want to see it? Absolutely. So is this like a big ass video game? You're being represented by. An avatar, just yes. like I would jump on NBA 2K. Now, not only are you an avatar, like when you go in this house, there's games and incentives where you can earn money. So these are actually um, reality functions in which you can actually take up during the game. Wow. I think it's genius because, you know, for years I watched my brother play World of Warcraft and mm. all these games where you sit in front of a screen, you know, you just give them all the money and you go home with nothing and now it's like the more you play these type of games the more crypto you earn which is why it's called play to earn play to earn listen to earn all that bunch of that is that the future of gaming now i think it's the future of just business like mm. you have you have to give the customer uh incentive like when right. we go to a concert all we doing is watching the show and getting a ticket but instead of you know the musician just selling tickets now he can sell an nft and you go to his concerts, you go to his meet and greets, right. you could go to his restaurant he owns over here. Merch that he releasing. Exactly. And it's better for the artist because now he has all that, that data right. and he can just let everybody know when they, whenever he got a new thing he want to do, go button. straight into all that data and, Man. you know, write to your fans. Man, you flip faster. You can actually get more product out. You get you can get the exposure for that product. You, you can, can move at the speed you want. To. I was just about to say, and then you can you can white label. You can bring in part, part. you can bring in parts that you can create, bring people under you. I see what it is now. And like all this is just like, you know, all these these are NFTs. So like, wow. you know, whoever owns this house owns those NFTs and you can put them up and it's like It's yeah. almost like you see somebody walk in with the Gucci belt. Exactly. Or he got on the <laughs> you know, you, you know what I'm saying? It's all swag. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's all like a, you this know? This is social currency. It's been happening for hundreds of years. Like, wow. And now it's just going, you know, into the digital era. I think this is really cool. You got the, the Snoop statue here out front. You got the Snoop statue right here blowing. It's blowing. That's forever <laughs> blowing 24 <laughs> 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 So when you're in a room like this, it's got stuff where you can actually go, go in a room. It's got so, stuff that's... All, these, for this all these avatars you see in there, you could go right up to them and press E and now y'all talking. Oh, hey, and these are real people in here. Yes, right? like that. And right now, this is just a beta. When it, it, it drops fully, you'll be able to communicate with people that are in real life, that are walking around the sandbox. Everything you see on that screen, you can see right there. Like, oh, this person owns this, he owns that. Wow. Oh, let me contact him. Wow. And we've personalized the space for Snoop. So when you come out here, you can see this awesome oh, wow. statue. Snoop smoking a blunt. How, how long is it taking to create a whole metaverse? It takes a lot, a lot of money lot of and a lot of time. And the developers are mainly overseas, which is why I'm saying like mm. city of Inglewood, city of Long Beach, these places need to have tech centers where these kids can do it from there. Cause it's like, you know, the, the language yeah. is, is hard to keep up over there and it's different times of the day. Um, but, you know, it's, it's the beginning of this era, so it's like, you know, it's going to come eventually, but I think shine a light on it, you, you expedite it. So you can't, uh, you know what I've noticed in the uh, app room? Hmm. Uh, a lot more uh, NFT creator apps have come out, a lot more um, uh, information on the metaverse. Talk about how important the education and just knowing what this is before you jump in here. Like, it has to come with responsibility of education, I, right? I think it's just like playing ball. Like, before you go on the court, you need to watch Kevin Garnett, you need to watch Cole, Cole Jordan. Jordan. You feel me? You gotta learn what you wanna do. And same with this space. You gotta watch the Gary V's. You gotta watch various YouTube platforms that give out information. And some of it is gonna be bad information, but the more you go through it, the more you just, you so know. You just type for what's real and what's not. Exactly, right? and that's what I did, you know, for the first time. I was I was watching the same YouTube video for two weeks. My girl was getting mad, because it was like, I would watch it over, because I didn't understand it. I'm like, why is NFT, why should it, I don't get it. And I had to watch it over and over and over. I'm writing notes, I'm just watching over, and then I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go to OpenSea, I'm gonna make one, I'm gonna 
listed and, and we went through we yeah. went through a lot no to, that's grassroots though to, to figure it out because once he kind of locked in on it he called me and we talked about it and from there it was like how can we work this and another thing i'd like to like make sure people understand is this is so early in the space mm. so it's you're not nobody's far behind if you just put in a few hours um and like take the time to understand what's going on you could catch up there's like a famous quote from like mark cuban where he got his billions because when Web two was coming around, yeah. he just kept up with with everything. With everything, as it, he yeah. didn't go to school nope. to be in computers. He but was just stayed informed of how to put. He, I think his claim of fame was he was able to put vocals on the internet. Audio, like, audio. Audio. He figured out how to put. He found yeah. something that the internet Tangible. was missing, yeah, yeah. and eventually, I think this is what this space is going to be. People yeah. are going to need to find the voice. What what what's missing and where they could plug but themselves that's in. That's where innovation comes when you. Yeah. Grow. Figure out what's missing. You 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 add and implement, and then if you see something growing, you buy it out, and that's what happened with Clone X. They wow. got bought out by Nike. Um, it's wow. an NFT Artifact. collection, artifacts. Wow. They got bought out by Nike for like two hundred, three hundred million dollars, and the community went crazy over that. So now you're seeing, you know, corporations mm. like Nike, um, Pepsi, Pepsi, Adidas, all over the place starting to invest into this Meta. Facebook just changed their name to Meta, and you're seeing the cosine of these major corporations. So the your Staples Center is now the crypto.com. You're understanding that this is going to be a part of the future. Wow, this is the future. One to ten. Where are we in the whole? Two. 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 two? I wouldn't even maybe, say two. Maybe, maybe Damn, wait, one point five? Yeah, one point eight. <laughs> you have to understand, like. That's why I'm saying it's that's early. Scary. We, now, that's scary. Th when you look at it, like, comparative to Web 2 and the start in what like 1999 2000 yeah, when it yeah. like the web boom took off yeah, and things yeah. were starting to change how long it took and how much changed from then to now mm. right we're just now really hearing about everything and understanding things and it's being talked about so over the next four or five years it's only gonna it's only gonna get crazy how far are we from uh being on metaverse on its own system like i noticed that you're using the pc right now you're using boo -boo. how far are we from having our own console a metaverse and i got a controller it's got a button it's, it looks just like our regular controllers that we use I, i'm i'm going with my gut and i think microsoft will provide it because they just spent like i don't even know yeah so number. you know there's already something similar you know the the idea of an oculus is to put you into the metaverse in a in a in a point and of view. And the Oculus is the the goggles yeah, moving around. Yeah. You got the handles to be able to touch buttons. I actually went to a, a recently. Yeah, went we, to we, a, we went we went yeah, together. Went to a place and it was like a place where you go and if I, I'm gonna put on a concert, I film in here and then I pick it up and put yep. it in the metaverse. You and you're see the around. concert? Yeah, yeah. So and, something and like that. And we've been doing so. Back to the you know the apes and everything, making music for them is strategic. And what we've been working with is you know. Um, directors mm -hmm. that could mod and, and make those 2Ds into 3Ds that are mm -hmm. moving, rapping, smoking, like say, just, yeah. you know, being artists. Yeah, being different. What industries are y'all looking to get into that you haven't jumped in? Y'all in music right now. I know I've talked to y'all about animation. Uh, what other industries do y'all want to be in? I mean, the movie, I mean, I would sit here and think that the movie industry see, would have in, to come, in, right? In the next, by May, June, the what we're going to be doing with this restaurant concept that we have is, oh, wow. is going to be different. It's insane because it's, he even the one who brought it up to me too. Like, cause he he know I always want to invest and I always want to start things. Like I always bet on myself, and he came to me with the idea of having a ghost kitchen. It's a kitchen where you know it's no actual employees. It's it's robots cooking the food, wow. and he took me down to the to the location in Santa Monica, and I'm like, oh, let's go. They got a ghost kitchen in there, where it's all. Machines robots. preparing your food. Uh -huh. Our kitchen specifically will have this really cool robot called a Flippy wow. uh, making the food for us, and it's it, it's different. It's very future focused. I think it's what kind of food. Right tacos. now, tacos. Board you know, tacos. Board tacos. Tacos and fried food. It's 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 going to be dope, and it's right on Third Street Promenade. And oh, wow. You'll be able to so walk around right right in into the middle it. of everything. So it's safe to say that y'all gonna drop an NFT to have invitations to come to that, y'all. Yeah, we're gonna be playing around with a lot of stuff. <laughs> we're gonna try um, to play around with it. Maybe it's a song you own, you can go to it. Like we don't want to make it like, oh, I could see them doing that. Like we want to put a flip on it. So we, like you said, we also have an animated project in the works that we're really excited about. What's up, that's like kind of encompasses 
Inglewood, Inglewood, and, and everything that we we've been you know it's something that we've been working on for years, and we're really really excited about that. Four years. And what kind of advice are y'all giving people to come up to you, young people, old people? It don't matter. Or, or walks with people. What kind of advice are y'all giving people in this space? So my grandma actually pulled me down the hall the other day, and she like, um, what's Bitcoin? And I just started laughing. I'm like, oh, it got to my grandma. Like, she's 62, go to church every day. Like, you know, so it's like, what what I told her, I'm like, that's the future currency. And, and you know, it was like me oh, trying yes. to, yeah, she didn't want it. She didn't understand it. But then I was like, how do I dumb it down to everybody? And then I just started to say to myself, like, just look at it as trading cards or look at it as a collectible. Like, all the church items that she owned in her house and she collect that she don't get nothing from, just look at it like that. It's, you buying into it to hold on to it to, you know, create generational wealth and, and, and financial freedom. Wow. Um, and I think the first thing people should do is just go straight to YouTube. It's free. Go on YouTube and watch everything for like two weeks. A lot, of, a lot of good information there to be able to grasp and give you kind of a point go on in Twitter, the direction. Go on Twitter, follow the right, you know, there's people that give out really great information on, on, on Twitter. We have a guy, Fran Alations, who kind of led us in the right direction to the community, people on the ground. And it's people like that, that will show you the right way. And, and really you can start on Twitter with just hashtag NFT, hashtag NFT art, like all those hashtags have you know, I think the same people in the same starting point. So it's like you could just lean, lean on others that are like starting from the same point as you as well. For artists, like this is where you can take ownership. You know, mm. we feel like for for music, this is how you change music. You know, Spotify, future. YouTube, you know, they've been, the streams have not been fair right. to, to artists and entertainers. And it like, was sold on the backs that it could be fair. Yeah. You know, that idea that you can own everything and I... The, the labels are making all the money, facts. you know. Artists are seeing pennies to what they should be getting. And this is an opportunity for you to kind of step in and take uh, take that ownership back. I saw Tory Lanez do a similar thing to this. Right. I saw him do something like this. Is it safe to say that this is the more lucrative version Absolutely. of the music industry for the artists. A hundred percent. It's not even if we if we uh, were to go that, through the numbers, it's not even close. Yeah, by far, because you you getting no name artists with a thousand fan base, making more money off of the the people listening to their music and buying it than the baby and and little baby. You get what I'm saying? So it's like that don't even make sense. Little baby getting forty million monthly listeners. How is somebody that has no name? releasing music on the blockchain making the same amount as him wow. just on the streams not wow. the shows and all that shit. just on a strictly song, the art that song you basis wow. you know you need a million streams to make seven thousand wow. dollars over here on the blockchain we could sell you know copies to people to own it and turn around and make that 10 times that money in the same day wow. so it's just you know for you to do that in the normal industry you need to sell out you need it to be a hit and, 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 and obviously yeah. finances is, is very, very important, but I think also the creative freedom of, I could drop my music however I want it, and the labels is not gonna say, oh, we need two weeks for marketing, oh, we need this, oh, we need a budget for this, we need, nah, just drop your shit. Control. Low overhead, the control. You just... And if I'm being frank, you wanna think that the label is being in graces of trying to have a great product released have momentum behind right. it, you know, like a strategy, right? Right. right. Versus gi and giving you some 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 leeway. Mm -hmm. A lot of artists coming in here. I can't say they have structure. I, I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna assume every artist knows what to do with their music. Right. So when you're you don't have that, that you open up for a label to come in and give some of this direction or control some of this control. Yeah. The fact that the education is coming out, mm -hmm. and this is why it was important for me to talk to y'all to come in here and do this. It's for their exposure to show people that you can do this yourself. As they watch this right now, mom, man, motherfuckers at home gonna be like, man, they gonna feel what you are saying. They gonna attach and feel like, man, Cordell speaking to me. Y'all, y'all brothers speaking to me right now. What I can do, and that's what this is for. This is to this is to make the imaginations be sparked. This is to activate the people who actually want to be better in this lane. These are for fans that want to get into this and don't know how. That's what I actually try to do on Certified. Try to get people, uh, the, the, the people that are actually in this space doing this. Hey, what's up? I'm Cameron Garnett, and welcome to KG Certified. When it comes to the world of banking and finances, I admit it can be very confusing, especially from people coming from my community. I used to wonder, why is banking so confusing? 
That's why I teamed up with Money Lion. And I'm sure you're asking, <laughs> KG, what's Money Lion? And how does it work? Money Lion is a groundbreaking app that allows you to bank, borrow, invest, and most importantly, manage your money. Imagine if you can get paid up to two days earlier. Imagine getting a direct deposit cash advance up to $1,000 with zero interest. Yes, you heard me, zero interest. Does your banking app do that? No, I didn't think so. Listen, financial literacy is very important to me, and that's why I'm putting you on game. Money Lion allows you to bank smarter rather than harder. That's why I downloaded the Money Lion app. It makes managing your finances easier than ever. Just go to moneylion.com to download the app. Dropping Dimes, sponsored by Money Lion. I want to ask you about NIL, man. Are you following any of the NIL stuff I in college? You think, I am. you think it's good for kids to on the I, NIL? A hundred percent. I feel like once you make some money, you feel different. So right. it's like your performance on the field is definitely gonna go up. With the NIL stuff, how many kids in college would you anticipate to jump in this lane of NFT and start to create their own NFT? As much as as much as possible. As much as possible, but I also kids don't know how though. You know that, right? The know-how is stopping those kids. Well, I will also wonder how would the NCAA can it control feel? someone's name and likeness once I have it? Say you in college, say if you're at USC, UCLA, UCLA right now doing this right here. Uh-huh. Let's keep it 100. Right. You know how many kids at your door? You know how many kids at y'all like, yo, like if you want some hustle shit, y'all yeah, put you on, this how much it's gonna be. Or right, I'm gonna right. I'm gonna have an agency, y'all sign up. Like you see where I'm going with it? Like it's 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 only right. If we're looking for a corporation, corporation, Nike jumped in here and bought that for a reason, right? Right. To maybe slide their own IP in exactly. here to do the same thing, create off the backs of what they are, mm -hmm. what they already have, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine if you didn't have to have no Nike, you can come out with your own creation. Now the vision is being able to put those creations out. Where right. how far are we from that? That's when I guess I'm getting at. I don't think we far at all. I think just the more people that start to understand NFTs are real and it's not just uh, you can screenshot it or it's a scam and it's, you know, all the negative things that's being said about it and people can start understanding crypto is always going to go up. Yeah. You know, it may go down one day, who knows, but your dollar is is definitely going down. So it's like, you know, you weigh out the options and then I think you, you got to jump out on that leap of faith and bet on yourself. And, and the two points I have for NIL is one, like Cordell saying, you got to kind of trust yourself and take advantage of the opportunity you have in that college environment. You know, you have your local college community that's going to support you regardless. They're really passionate. And then two is just to be careful at the same time. You know, these kids are going to be signing contracts. They're going to be negotiating with agents. And it's their first time they ever It's their first time ever doing it. Like, mm. and, and, you know, you just don't want to sign a bad deal. You want to make sure that, like what Cordell mentioned earlier, is that if you're going to hop into the crypto space, make sure you're not jumping into a pump and dump scam or, or ending up in a situation where you're not going to be able to fulfill the commitments that you're that you're signing up for. Wow. Um, a lot of kids are not going to know that in the beginning. Yeah, and you you know how it goes. Like, yeah. you know, you, you've talked to me about athletes lost even at the pro yeah. level yeah. Yeah. Um, looking for direction. So, you know, just to be careful into what you're what you're hopping into. Scum is on all levels. Yeah, yeah. You know every level, and be every industry. Yeah. Be creative and, and, and own your own projects. Like look into building it on your own. Right. That that would be my that would be my two cents on that. Take me through um, the ideal of owning a stock and the similarities in owning an NFT and how they actually mirror stocks and you know that whole wave is like stock. Yesteryear. Yeah, that, that's back then. Yesteryear. And this is like the new one. Yeah. And essentially, the NFT is the exchange, the the company. And the NFT is the stock. Mm. So when you buy one stock, you buying a piece of that company. So when the whole value goes up, it all goes up with it. And you can trade it however you please and, too, and, just like a and regular. This goes stock. back to, to to the community building. You know, when you buy an NFT, you're you're like like Cordell said, investing into that company. You're investing into the future of what they're going to build. And and you're, you're you know, that's why you want to pick the right projects. It's like picking the right stock. You want to see growth in the right direction. You could track it. You could. You could track it in very similar ways. The difference with this is, instead of having all those shares, now you have 10,000 uh, uh, NFTs in one collection. So that's, each one is 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 more rare than another. Oh, wow. So this one stock may be 100,000, but this other stock, when I say stock, I'm talking about NFTs. Facts, I got you. This other stock may be 500,000 just because of the, 
the scarcity of it or, or how rarity, rarity how rare it is. And I think another big point where they're very similar is is you have to be ready to hold on. Like you can't just see it's that a, it's a long play. People bought board apes and crypto punks at a couple hundred dollars. And it went up to a thousand, two thousand dollars and they sold, sold it. it. They made their thousand, two thousand dollars, but in the it, long run they missed out on four hundred, five hundred thousand. So you, just by waiting eleven more months. Wow. Similar to selling a stock early and being like, damn. Wow. You it's the same thing here. I think it's more cool to show off what you own now with the art, and it's like it's being catered to a youthful generation. People are making it the profile picture of their social media platforms. Uh, how how far are we from the board apes or the NFTs being tangible to where I can I can buy I bought a board ape or I bought whatever I well, own or whatever, and now I want to hang it in my wall or I want to hang it in my house. How how far are we from those tangibles? Being, being possible. If you buy an NFT, you could have a digital screen, a digital yeah. frame, and you could put it up. It's it's I something that's that. already ready to go. Mm. But eventually, I've been seeing people make jewelry. Yeah, or like, people get yeah, real creative. Yeah, there's a lot going on. I want to ask you, uh, tee that up, man. I saw your dad with a very rare one of one death row NFT chain on. Oh, yep. And he said it was only one. Um, it was super dope. It was like a, I don't want to say a later version. It's like a, it's newer, a newer version, newer version New of logo. what the old one came, you right. know. Talk about that, man. Like So after he bought Death Row. Shout out to Snoop for that, too. He bought yeah. Death Row back. That's huge for yeah, the coach. That's huge. Facts. So, I, you know, after he bought Death Row, he wanted to recreate the chain um, and, and recreate the narrative of the brand. Mm. While he was talking about the chain, I'm like, we should sell the chain after you wear it after the Super Bowl mm. and let your fans be able to own it. And like, whether it's a bid, whether it's, uh, I don't know what we do with it, but that needs to be sold right after. The conversation turned into selling that whole outfit he wore for the Super Bowl. And wow. now we in talks with a marketplace and, you know, that looked like probably end of this year, that will be possible. But I think it's just cool ways to give your legacy See. to your fans rather See. than it staying at the Hard Rock Cafe or See. a place where they just taking all the money and it's not being seen on a public block. Um, blockchain. I saw um, Green Bay, I don't know if y'all noticed, but Green Bay I think has 20%, 10% of its own value that they actually let the fans have a chance oh, to buy hard. back into it. Yeah. Because if y'all have ever been to Green Bay, Green Bay is like a neighborhood. Mm. The neighborhood supports the Packers, meaning like where you park to go into the, you park in someone's home. <laughs> it's crazy, but that whole circle of, uh, of community supports that stadium, those players who just re-signed, all that. They feel they have as much as value and invested into the into the in, into the into the team and the organization as anybody else as supporters. But they actually get a tangible in which they can put their money in and and grow as the team grows. I thought that was innovative. Is, yeah. is NFT kind of the new space to do some some of that? That's literally the whole like basis. Foundation and basis mm. of what NFTs are and what DAOs are and right. you know Web 3.0. Right. That's literally that all what that of, is. For example, there's the Wagme brand. You know, they're we're working with them. I invested in Wagme. Um, it's the first ever uh, digital soccer team. What's so Wag? What's Wagme? We're all going to make it. Oh, so wow. it's, it's Wagme United. They're buying a soccer team, and that we're part of the group, a, a Division Two <laughs> uh, English soccer club. That'll be run by the community that, that digitally. Is this the new wave of business? Would you say? I think so because when you think about it, musician as an avatar never gets sleepy, never gonna go to jail, Fox. never gonna talk back. An uh, athlete that's digital never gonna take a playoff, never gonna. You get what I'm saying? So it's no like load management. Exactly. And <laughs> these NBA's and NFL's and these labels are in it for the money. They're not in it for the individual. Fox. But in this space, it's for the individual. So if you take your talents to this space, now you become the label, you become the organization. And there's no more middlemen. Corporate America gonna get slick and come. Oh no! Nah, what they, they gonna they do are. is they gonna buy people out, Facts. like you saw with Nike and Facts. Artifacts. Facts. Everybody got a number. Facts. It's just the number gonna have to go higher over time, and that's certified. <laughs> and on that, we talk to y'all later. Right? Get the fuck up out of here. Paramount Mountain. 
place where entertainment lives. Home to bumblebees, owls, and birdies. <laughs> Giant hippos and flying jackasses. Let her rip, tater chip! Yep, this mountain's full of surprises. In fact, I'm not even Tim McGraw. <laughs>